Welcome to the Statistic in DD YouTube channel. Today I'd like to show you an easy to use but powerful tool for selecting color scales for visualizations. That's a non-trivial topic and a little help is um, much appreciated, I think. Um, so the tool I want to show you is in the TMAP tools package written by Martin Tanekes. And you start it simply by loading the package. Of course, you need to have it installed and using the palette explorer function as I do now. Um, and then you see it's a shiny app. So you see on the left that the R session is busy now serving the app. And this is what the app looks like. So it shows us a lot of color scales from the R color brewer package. And at the bottom, we also see some Viridis color scales, which have become quite popular in recent years. So what does the app do for us to help us select color scales? First of all, there are three types that we have to distinguish. So we have to think a little bit about our data. Um, there are sequential color scales, categorical and diverging. So sequential means we have a gradual change. Um, so it's for numeric data, order matters. Um, and we want to see a gradual change as we move along the color scale. Categorical and contrast um, is about distinguishing categories. So no ordering is implied and we want to be the categories as distinct as possible. And diverging is we have a neutral midpoint and we want to diverge gradually to the left and to the right and have a clear contrast between the extreme ends. Right, and the Viridis scales are sequential again. So what can the app do for us? Um, you see that on the right, below the color scales, we get the R code. Um, so from the R color brewer package, get brewer pal, uh, we can obtain the code to use the scale. And for the Viridis scales at the bottom, we have the Viridis light package and the Viridis function there. Um, but alternatively, we can also obtain the hex values for the scale. So just clicking this option here at the bottom left, I get the hex values. Right, we can change the number of colors. I do that here at the top for the sequential range and you see instantly we, we get an update. If we like, we can adjust the contrast range um, and move away from automatic and you see that the colors um, get adopted and the code gets adopted immediately. The categorical scales here in the middle are limited in the number of colors they contain. Um, so if I, if I go too high, then colors uh, repeat if I don't use the stretch option. So that's very convenient to uh, be able to stretch these scales here. Right, um, what else do we have? Alternatively, we can also get the TMAP layer function code, which is a bit, little bit different. So originally these scales were developed uh, with geographical data visualization in mind, creating maps using colors there. But of course we can use the colors in, uh, for, the, for all kinds of visualizations. And last but not least, and quite importantly, I think at the bottom right here, we have a color blindness simulator. So these days a lot of talk is about inclusion and one important aspect in data visualization, of course, is to think about color blindness. It's more common than people who are not affected might think. So here we can simulate three kinds of color blindness. And you see, as I click on them, um, the scales, color scales change and I get an impression how people with this um, type of color blindness would perceive my colors, uh, my scales. And you see also that some of the scales are grayed out now as I simulate color blindness. So deuteranopia means that um, green is, uh, cannot be perceived. Protonopia means there's no red and tritonopia means no blue can be perceived. Right, that's it for today. Of course, a lot more could be said about um, colors. It's quite a complex and huge topic. You might want to have a look at the color space package. Um, in November 2020, an article was published in the Journal of Statistical Software about the color space package. So a lot to explore there, but I, today I just wanted to show you this tool. I hope it's useful for you. Um, yeah, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already really helps and all the best for your data visualization. See you next time. Ciao.